Okay, so this tutorial is going to look at creating a skill tree. The skill tree is part of the UI, partially because of where it's located as far as a design point of view. It is part of the canvas, and it is overlaid on top of whatever you're doing for the most part. So if you're in a 3D environment, the skill tree will be overlaid on top of that. So let's take a look at how to do this. First of all, if you haven't watched the other tutorials, that's fine. None of this will have any impact on this tutorial. In fact, I specifically disabled the functionality for this over here to make sure that there is no interference. Okay, so let's go up to game object. We go to UI and we go to button. Now, if you're starting with a clean slate, you're going to see a canvas is going to be created. A button will be created inside that canvas and in event system. We already had those, so they already appeared. This is what the button looks like by default, and it says the word button. Why does it say the word button? Because if you click on this here, you'll see text. So there is actually a text object saying what this button reads. So you could actually change the button based on certain criteria. Well, we're just going to get rid of the text because we're going to use a picture. So speaking of which, down here in the asset area, you can see there are three pictures that I imported. And when I say imported, I just dragged and dropped them from an external folder right into the asset area. When you import a new image, a 2D image into a 3D environment, it defaults to texture. So I've already taken a moment to change this, but it normally starts out here. Make sure you change these to here. If you do not change these to here, it will not work. So make sure you change those to sprite. In fact, you can select all three at the same time and change them all at the same time. All right, so we have a button. We want to replace the default button, which it shows down here, with one of ours. So let's take this one, and with the button selected, see source image, you put this here. Now, if you hadn't changed this to a sprite, this would not work. So as you can see, it doesn't look right. It's squashed, but that's okay. We can just change the width and the height. Now, the actual size is 72 by 72. If you decide that you made it a little bit too small, a little bit too big, you can scale it. So let's make it like 80 by 80. And just like that, you've taken this default gray button with a text on it and changed it into your own unique button or your own unique image for that button. And it'll still have button functionality. So when I click on it, you'll notice that it still hovers. It turns like a little bit darker. Click, it becomes like transparent or at least very uh, darker. And then you let go and it transitions back. So it has the visual cues. It just doesn't actually do anything yet. You have to tell it what to do. Now, I already have a GM object, but as I said, since I don't want you to have to do the other tutorials if you don't want to, I'll create a new GM object. And this one I'll call uh, skill GM. So game object, create empty, and we'll call this skill GM. And it doesn't matter its location, it's just going to be a shell object to hold code. Speaking of which, right click, create, C sharp, and we'll call this skill tree. So click on skill GM, put on skill tree. And now what we're going to do is in that skill tree script, we're going to start adding the functionality that, make, that makes this button work. So let's open that up. We'll zoom in a bit, holding the CTRL key, the control key, and scrolling the scroll wheel on the mouse. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple liberties here. In your game, okay, say there is a 
damage calculation. So every time a melee attack lands on the enemy or uh, a bullet hits the enemy, there's a damage calculation. What you want to do is within that damage calculation, you want to put in another variable. That variable would start off with a value of 1. Why? Because any number times 1 is equal to itself. So in other words, that that variable is going to work as a factor, but it will not have any impact until you change it because it's going to start off as the value 1. This particular skill, as you can see, has a sword on it. So it's going to be a skill that increases damage. So what you would do is that variable that makes no difference at first because it's a value of 1, when you buy the skill, you'd increase it to, say, 1.2 or 1.5 or 2.0. In other words, the value is going to increase, and therefore the calculation will create a higher final value. So 100 points of damage times 1.0 is 100 points of damage. You buy the skill, that 1.0 becomes, say, 1.2, 100 point of damage times 1.2 is 120. So without changing your calculation, just by changing one of the variables in the calculation, or should I say the value of the variable, suddenly you have a different result. And so that's what you really need to do. You need to scale your game like that. You put in those variables ahead of time, and when you start assigning different values to them, suddenly your calculations uh, will have different values. So like health. Maybe you have a variable uh, max hero HP starts off as 500. Maybe you buy a health skill that increases it by 10%. So again, you have a, a variable already in there calculating the health. It's 500 times whatever that factor is. starts off as 1, so it's 500. You buy that skill, change it to say 1.2, and now 500 times 1.2 is 600. So that's the part that I really can't show you. I've, I'm walking through it with you so you know how to apply it to your application, but I really can't show you because this isn't part of a full game. I can only show you the variables and say, okay, take those variables and uh, integrate that into your application. So public, static, and this one will be, uh, we'll make it a float because we said we're going to have decimals. So public static flow and we'll call this hero att pow and it starts off as one so hero attack power starts off as one again because whatever number you multiply by one is equal to itself zoom in a little bit more now what's going to happen is when you click on the button you want this to get changed so outside of start, outside of update, you're going to type in public void, and it's going to be whatever you want to call it. So uh, melee incr increase lvl1. So this is just the name of the function, and again. It should be something that's meaningful you to you. It, it, this in of itself does nothing. What we put in here is really what's important. This is making it self-documenting, do, documenting, so that way you, the programmer, the designer, will know what this does just by looking at it. And so, hero attack power will be set equal to 1.2f. And just to make sure it's working, debug.log. And we'll put in hero attack power. Now, since this is a static variable, it's available anywhere in the application. Since I'm making a change within the script that it's declared, I can just put in the variable name. But if I'm making a change to this variable in any other script, I have to preface it with the name of the script. So in other words, if I was in another script, this would have to say skill tree dot hero attack power and then whatever I'm doing to it. So we created our function. Let's go back to our button. On click, 
list is empty, so we'll click on the plus sign. It says, okay, what object are we looking at? Well, let's take that skill GM object and put it right there. Functions associated with this object are now available to the click button. Specifically, we created a script, so the script should be there, and it is. And melee increase level one. So whatever is in there will occur when this is clicked on. So if I haven't forgotten anything, that will be the beginning. So if I click on this button, there we go. That variable has now been increased, so wherever that variable is present, a change will occur. So that's part of it. That's okay. I click on the skill and I'm able to purchase the uh, ability. But what about a prerequisite? What if it takes more than one point? Say it takes, or maybe it takes one point, but I have zero points because right now there isn't any conditions. So that's what we're going to look at now. We're going to look at adding a prerequisite before you can click on the button. So to do that, you really need to make the skill GM object aware of the button. So the button is aware of the skill GM object because we did that here, but the opposite really isn't true. We need the skill GM object to be able to make changes to the button. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new variable up here. Public button oops buttons not available I need to modify this up here using unity engine dot UI public button and it will be we'll just call it melee one save it Go back to the skill GM object, and there's that new button. It's specifically looking for a button. So we'll take the button and we'll put it there. We'll eventually change the name of it, but we only have one for the moment. Go back to the script. So now what we need is we need to change this button based on a value. So we said there's going to be skill points. So what we're going to do is, again, I'm going to put the skill point declared in here. The skill point would actually be declared in your GM script. So I'll just do the sequential. So public, static, and it will be an, uh, an int, and it will be total skill points and I'll start off as zero so the update section gets run once per frame so now that we've reviewed that we can delete this So, if total skill points equals equals zero, then we want something happen. We want the button to be disabled. So we're changing melee one. Whoops, there it is. So melee one dot get component. button enabled equals false so we created a new variable based on the value of that variable this button will be disabled so you'll still see it it just won't do anything. So nothing down here. See how it's not changing when I'm hovering over it? 
clicking, clicking, it is not working. So just like that, you've created a prerequisite. So let's change total skill points to one. And here we'll say else The same thing, except it will be set to true. This is presuming that your skill points can never equal a negative number, which they really shouldn't. So total skill points are equal to one. If this is equal to zero, it's disabled. If it's not equal to zero, then it should be enabled. Now that will also need an additional condition later because once you've bought it, you don't want it to be enabled. You want it to again be disabled. But again, this is an iterative process. Can't put all the conditions in at once. So now we run it. And now you know it's working because you can see the change. It's enabled again. 1.2. So what do we want to do now? Well, we want that point to be consumed. So hero attack power is increased so that new variable total skill points minus equals one. In other words, it's been reduced by one. Now, if it costs two points, then it should be reduced by two. If it costs three, it should be reduced by three, so on and so forth. So we point at it, it's gray, so it's changing color so we know it's active. We'll click on it, that gets increased, but if you notice, it's disabled now. It's disabled because the points have been spent and it no longer meets the criteria. So that's the basics for skill tree. I'm going to actually break this down into two videos because we start getting into some of the minutia of, like I said, now we have to look at, okay, this has been purchased. So even if you have enough points, it should be disabled. So like if I was to increase this to two, it would still be active and we don't want it to be. So that's one thing that has to be done. Another thing is it's only a single uh, skill. We're going to add another skill and then add another skill above this, just like uh, skill trees have multiple tiers. And so what's going to happen is this one will only be available if this one has been used and if this one uh, is also purchased, because sometimes you have to purchase a certain amount of points within one tier before you go to the next tier. Also, there's the issue of this isn't uh, what if this isn't binary? What if this is like a rank one, rank two, rank three? So we still have a lot to look at, but I don't want to do it all in one video. But this is a good, solid start.